All right, so with the recent passing of the Justin Johnson Young Dolph trial, uh, we had we got a lot of answers out of that. We found out that Big Jook was actually Unk, and he is the one that dropped the bag for this job. We all suspected it, didn't know for sure, but now we know. And uh, we got a lot of people on different sides of the fences on if there's a Rico coming for CMG or not. I'm one of the people that believes there's going to be a Rico coming for CMG. And so today we're going to be reacting to a video by Dose of Mystery called Sliding for Young Dolph, the orchestrated hit of Big Jook. One afternoon in the middle of January 2024, Anthony Mims, known publicly as Big Jook and as world famous Memphis rapper Yo Gotti's older brother, sat in his car after an emotional tolling farewell service where he and his friends and family members mourned the passing of Jook and Yo Gotti's dear uncle, Eric Bovin, who had passed away earlier that month. Sadly, just a few hours after the service was over, Big Jook would be facing his own untimely hit at the hands of his attackers, who allegedly attended the farewell service and waited in the back pews for the proceeding to be over so they could ambush one. and take the life of Big Jook at his most vulnerable moment. As of That'd be really bold if they did do something like that. Today, the investigation is still ongoing as police are following a trail of leads to find Big Jook's assailants and do justice in his name. It was around 4 p.m. on Saturday, July 13th at the Paranon Restaurant and Events Center in Memphis, Tennessee. And to say the atmosphere was gloomy would be an understatement. Earlier that year, Big Jook and Yo Gotti's uncle, Eric Bovin, had passed away. And his farewell service in Memphis was the last opportunity that Jook and his brother had to gather with their friends and family members to honor his memory together and say goodbye to him for good. In a video that was later circulated online by TMZ and other sources, Big Jook was captured crying as he walked up to his uncle's open casket to say his final goodbyes. Because Yo Gotti had to catch a plane out of Memphis amid bad weather conditions, he left the service earlier than his brother and there was not as much coverage on him as there was on Jook. See, that's one of the reasons a lot of people are suspecting that Yo Gotti might have knew that something was about to happen to Jook. Who stayed at the event center for several hours after the service had ended. Shortly after the farewell service, Big Jook stepped outside the event center and walked back to his car, where his mother, Geraldine Mims, was sitting in silence. As Jook got in the car, his mother got out, and that's when tragedy struck. A few seconds later, a white Ford SUV. See, that's why I don't believe that Gotti knew anything about it, because their mother was sitting in the car too. Another thing, a lot of people, after the trial, a lot of people were trying to say that uh, this SUV was a Ford Expedition, and they were trying to say it was the same Ford Expedition that uh, Straight Drop had at the time where he did his thing with Dolph. But this looks like a Ford Explorer to me. So, and they were saying they had a police package on. I don't see a police package unless they're talk talking about the rims. But this is definitely a Ford Explorer, not an Expedition. V with tinted windows and black tires pulled up next to his car and opened fire, riddling Jook's car with bullets and striking Jook himself 10 times. According to a Facebook post made by the Memphis PD on January 14th, the day after the shooting, an officer in the area of 6385 Winchester Road at around 4.15 p.m. that day when he heard shots being fired near the Perignon Event Center. Upon arriving at the scene, the officer found two males suffering from multiple gunshot wounds lying on the ground. Paramedics were immediately called to the scene to perform life-saving measures on the persons that were shot, and they were both promptly taken to nearby St. Francis Hospital. Sadly, as soon as they arrived, 47-year-old Anthony Mims, aka Big Jook, was pronounced deceased. As news of Jook's tragic passing spread throughout Memphis, many of his associates and close friends shared their condolences on social media. Rappers like ESTG, Big Boogie, Meek Mill, and Glorilla, some of whom were closely associated with Collective Music Group, Yo Gotti's record label in which Jug played a critical role, shouted out the fallen Jug with a series of touching stories and posts on Instagram. As for his brother Yo Gotti, 
He didn't have a lot of time to grieve the passing of his dear older brother. For less than a week after the tragic incident that claimed his life, Gotti was already back performing on stage at 42 Doug's concert at Little Caesars Arena, which took a lot of his fans by surprise. While the See, a lot of people are finding that suspect as well, but, but honestly, that was probably planned uh, months in advance. And, you know, 42 Doug just had to go do that little bid right in the midst of his heat wave. So he cooled off a little bit. And you know, he probably tries just trying to get 42 Doug back in front of some eyes and get him back hot again, get him back to making some more money for CMG. So that was kind of a smart move on Gotti's part. Just had to probably just popped out there for a quick song or two and went back and handled his uh, family affairs. Entire city and the hip hop community grieved for Juk. The Memphis Police Department launched an investigation to find his assailants and bring them to justice. As the authorities analyzed surveillance footage from that afternoon, they noticed that at the time of the hit, Big Juke's mother had been standing very close to the car where her son was brutally assassinated. Had she remained in the car, it's very likely that she would have suffered the same fate as Juke. But fortunately, none of those bullets hit her and she was able to walk away physically unharmed. On That's wild, man. These streets ain't got no love, no rules. They do not care. They almost took out their mama too, bro. Wild. On the evening of the hit, Deputy Chief Paul Wright gave a press conference in which he updated the public on the progress of the investigation. According to Wright, the Memphis Police Department was hard at work trying to identify a suspect in the surveillance video. Unfortunately, despite their advanced facial recognition technology, the faces of the suspects were unrecognizable due to the grainy quality of the footage. Still, they were hopeful that with the make and model of the SUV that was visible in the video, they would soon find Juke's assailant. Disturbingly, just hours after the investigation began, many sources who had been close to Juke during his final moments claimed that the suspects who had carried out his hit had also been present at Eric Bovin's funeral. As per their statements, the assailants sat there the entire service in the back pews of the event center. And minutes before it ended, they stepped out into the parking lot to wait for Big Jug to exit so they could ambush him in his car. Although this version of the events was not captured by surveillance videos, the authorities are still hopeful that the new leads will continue to be uncovered during the investigation. The identity of Juk's assailants is still a mystery to this day, but even if this hasn't been officially confirmed, police suspect Big Juk's hit may have been carried out in retaliation for his alleged involvement in the 2021 hit of Young Dolph. We now know the to understand the entire backstory, alleged. let's factual. rewind to 2017, when Big Juk first got involved with Young Dolph. Since 2012, Big Juk had an active role in managing the business side of Collective Music Group, actively scouting talent and managing and promoting projects for the label. In 2016... See, so y'all hear that? Some of y'all that was arguing with me in the last video saying Juke had nothing to do with CMG. It was all Gotti. Did y'all not just hear what they just said? Teen, up and coming Memphis rapper Young Dolph was set to sign with Collective Music Group, Yo Gotti's label, but changed his mind at the last minute. After Yo Gotti allegedly took offense to his lack of commitment, Young Dolph shouted out Yo Gotti in a disrespectful tweet on February 11, 2016, in which he said, bro went from being my number one fan and wanting to sign me to being my biggest hater, followed by a laughing emoji. In the interviews that followed the disrespectful tweet, Yo Gotti initially downplayed the issue and dismissed it as nothing important. But the situation would escalate very quickly. Soon after yeah. that, when Black Youngster, another up and coming rapper associated with Collective Music Group, uploaded a video of him and his crew walking around Young Dolph's neighborhood in Memphis, armed with multiple weapons and threatening to take Dolph's life as soon as they found it. Black youngster is a moron for this. Stupid. Tell Snitchy. Where he at right now? Where he at? 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 Where he at?
We in Cash Day right now. We just left the store. Where you at right now, though? Where you at right now? Where you at? CMG beat. Yeah. Where you at? CMG, bitch. Yeah, CMG for life. Look, got his CMG chains on. Screaming CMG for life. Out here looking like a whole gang, like CMG is a criminal organization. If the feds ever take CMG to court for a RICO to prove that they are a criminal organization, all they have to do to prove that they're a gang, all they have to do is play this video by an idiot black youngster. That's all they have to do is play that video. That's evidence right there. Fuck with those. Yeah, we don't fuck with those. Yeah, yeah. You fuck with those, cuz? Yeah. Fuck with yeah. those, man. Yeah. They still screaming. Yeah. Boy. You know what's going on, boy? I love Cash Day. What's up, blood? What's up, Eastside Bishop? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, big blood. What's up? What's up, cuz? What's up, blood? Throwing up gang signs. Eastside Bishop. Yeah, he's talking. Look, man. Nigga, know what's going on. We out here. We out here like that. Although they didn't end up finding him that day, Dolph didn't exactly turn down the heat after that. And exactly a year after his disrespectful tweet, he released his highly controversial diss track titled Play With Your B, which featured a series of personal insults aimed at Yo Gotti and Big Juk, even disrespecting Juk's sister with some very direct lyrics. To make a long story short, between February and September 2017, young Dolph survived two hit attempts. One in Charlotte, North Carolina, in which his van was sprayed with over 100 rounds of ammunition as he prepared to perform at the CIAA sporting tournament. Earlier this year, 100 bullets were fired into Young Dolph's SUV, and three months later, police have pinned Memphis rapper Black Youngsta for his alleged involvement. Authorities have revealed that the van used to shoot up Dolph's bulletproof SUV in February was rented by Youngsta, whose associates later turned I themselves over to the Mecklenburg County out of Sheriff's it. Office, where they were then charged with six counts each of discharging a weapon into occupied property and felony conspiracy. Upon entering the sheriff's office, Youngster proclaimed his innocence, making this brief statement. I ain't fired nothing. I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing. I ain't seen nothing. It's obviously somebody already. Somebody snitched. Youngster's attorney. Ain't nobody got a snitch, dummy. You used the van that was in your name. Ain't nobody got a rat or snitch. Except for you just talking to the camera just now. Attorney stands by his client's innocence by stating the van rented by the rapper was stolen prior to when the shooting took place. Young and Dolph have both engaged this ongoing feud in which public threats were made on social media and through lyrics. And another in Los Angeles, where he was targeted by one of Yo Gotti's associates. A man has been arrested in connection with the shooting of rapper Young Dolph. Police booked Corey McClendon from Memphis, Tennessee for attempted murder. Yo Gotti's Young homie. Dolph was shot multiple times Tuesday after getting into an argument with three men outside of a Hollywood hotel. One of those three men was Gotti. The rapper Gotti. remains in critical condition. Bail for McClendon has been set at $1 million. Yesterday, young Dolph was shot, and that was in Hollywood outside of the Lowe's Hotel on Hollywood and Highland. Mm -mm -mm. Now, according to TMZ, the argument was between members of young Dolph's entourage and Yo Gotti's entourage. They had an argument that escalated to a physical fight. At one point, young Dolph was knocked to the ground. That's when one of the suspects pulled out a handgun and began shooting at him. Mm -mm -mm. Now, the three people who allegedly assaulted young Dolph ran in separate directions, and he managed to get up and run into a business that was nearby. Police are looking for three people. One person was detained. They said they are not sure if that person who shot was who was the person who shot Young Dolph. And they're saying that Yogati is also a person of interest. After those two violent incidents, Gotti versus Young Dolph controversy quieted down for about four years. Until in November 2021, Dolph was hit outside a store in Memphis in broad daylight in what is now known as one of the city's most infamous hits of the decade. In the month following the hit, Go Big Juke was Juk. captured on camera one night with a man named Hernandez Govan, father to late Memphis rapper Lotta Cash Desto, and one of the men responsible for orchestrating Young Dolph's hit. As the picture circulated online, speculations that Big Juke could have been involved in organizing Dolph's hit started spreading. But instead of laying low and waiting for the heat to die down, Juk went live on social media soon after the picture was uploaded and recklessly disrespected the deceased young Dolph in what later became a very viral video. Hey, y'all. 
I'm finna start a GoFundMe, man, cause I know a lot of you rap niggas fucked up out here, man. Can't do no shows. Ain't say no money. So guess what? I'ma come say today. I'ma come pay you niggas rent if y'all got some. If y'all got somewhere to stay. I'll pay your car note. I'll pay your jewelry note so you won't get repo. You feel me? Whatever else you rent or leasing, I'ma pay that shit. Grown man but when this shit break time. back on, I want 10% of what you make, nigga. I'm, I'm, I'm saving you in a, in a, in a, in a, in a crucial time, so don't think I'm trying to get over on you. Because, you know, you don't want to get put out. That'll ruin your career. So just hit my DM, man. You know, we ain't, we ain't gonna put niggas business out there. You know, we ain't that tight. You feel me? We can put it in contract. This will never be talked about. You feel me? I'll be, I won't, I'll be so far out the way that won't nobody even know the deal we made. You feel me? So I got up to, I think me and bro gonna put together up to about an M. So whoever trying to, him and bro, Say they career, man. They gonna put together the money. Need to shoot some so videos CMG. while the label budgets is cut off. Labels, labels, they cut off right now. No budgets, no money. We still open. CMG still open. Budgets mm. never closed. You feel me? Mm. CMG still open. But, uh, For the time being. Oh, I'll take, y'all can pawn some of that jewelry. If it's real, y'all can come and pawn it. You ain't gotta go to the pawn shop. Come to me. Hey, this real shit. Don't go to Cash Advance. Come to CMG Advance. We got, we got some money for you niggas, man. Right now. Y'all keep saying he ain't got nothing to do with CMG, we huh? We got money. Right now, man. Pull up. Don't make this shit happen, man. Because I think this going to hurt a lot of rappers, man, after this, man. These niggas can't go like these. Some niggas of y'all gonna be down go in the comments. Oh, you dry snitching now. The feds already got all this it, stuff. They put, he put it this stuff wasted all on the drip. See all that drip? I ain't buy. See that? Who worried? We not worried. You feel me? All that shit y'all used to. You feel me? More all that shit how y'all used to fuck the money up. You feel me? <laughs> Remember when y'all used to fuck the money up? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, this is the time. I didn't fuck it up. What y'all want to do, man? You hear me? Although the link between Juk's involvement in his brother's feud with Yo Gotti and his untimely passing still hasn't been officially confirmed. One thing that's certain is that Big Juk suspected that he was a target. On Friday, January 12th, just hours before his hit, Big Juk posted a video of himself on Instagram with the ominous caption, they don't want to face you, they want to snake you. Stay alert to stay alive, watch your back at all times, put snakes on the plate and eat great. Despite his fans' allegations and conspiracy theories, it's unlikely that Big Juk predicted his own hit, but still, the post is a little chilling in hindsight. On Wednesday, January 31st, 2024, Big Juk's family organized his farewell service in Hickory Hill outside of New Direction Christian Church. But because of the high-profile nature of his hit, this was no ordinary farewell service. Surrounding the event from all angles were said, snipers, yeah, more helicopters, Trump. and dozens of police officers <laughs> from the Memphis Police Department lining the perimeter and standing at the ready to ensure the safety of all funeral goers. According to Fox 13 Memphis, there were both private and public security at the service, with 25 armed guards covering the farewell service inside the church, outside in the reception area, and on the roof, having been hired directly by the Mims family to prevent a similar incident to Eric Bovin's farewell service from happening. Despite his tragic passing, Big Juk will continue to be remembered as one of the fundamental pillars of CMG. And as an mm. important part of the Memphis history, one of the fundamental pillars of CMG. Y'all still trying to say Big Juk had no business dealings in CMG, right? That he wasn't a part of CMG. He wasn't an exec for CMG. He wasn't the number two in charge of CMG. Y'all still want to argue that point, huh? The Rico coming, y'all. The 
the Rico coming. But anyways, anyways, if y'all made it this far and you're new to the channel, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell icon. That way you get notified every time I drop a new video. We are getting close to 1,700 subscribers now. The goal is 10,000 subscribers. Why y'all down there? Make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button or maybe hit the thumbs down button, whatever. Just hit one of them buttons. Let YouTube know that this video is important. Let's get us pushed out into the algorithm. Let's get some views on this video. Hey, go for this video. 10,000 views, 2,000 likes. Let's go, bro. It's your boy Charm. I'm up out of here.